I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on calculus. In this series, we will actually consider examples to find volumes of solids. Normally, we begin with very simple examples, but here my approach will be slightly different. We will figure out a general formula for any function for volume of solids of revolution and then we are going to apply that formula to find the volumes. So uh, let us say that we have a function which could be represented like uh, something like this, right? Okay. So what we have here is a function f of x. Let's call this as y equals to f of x, any general function. So consider what happens when we rotate f of x about x axis through 360 degrees. Okay, let's make x and y axis now. Let's say this is our x axis and that's the y axis. Okay. So what we're trying to do now is we are trying to rotate this portion of our function about x-axis by 360 degrees. So if you do that, what you really get is a kind of a shape which we refer as solids of revolution, right? So what we get here will be, let me draw with this uh, symmetry in mind, something like this, right? So what you get is this kind of a shape. Do you see that part, right? So, so we get something like this. In three dimensions, it will look like this. All right. So whenever you rotate a function about x-axis, this is our x-axis, that is y-axis you get solids of revolution. So that is what we call solids of revolution, right? So that results into as shown here. Now these shapes which you get help us to derive formulas for finding the volume and also finding volume for any function with this concept right so if you consider let us say slices of this particular solid volume let us take a few slices from here let's take a very small slice, let's say this portion of a curve, then this slice here will be actually like a disk, right? So this will be kind of a disk, right? So the portion which I have drawn here is kind of a disk. Now, if the width of this disk is very small, let's call this as delta x, so we can think about having infinitely small disk like this all along the axis of x. Then adding their volumes, we'll get the volume of the whole figure. That is the concept. Okay. So, so we get this with varying height, you can say, or radius in this case, right? So we get this with changing radius. Now, this change in radius is because of, uh, can be related to the function, right? Which is same as that of the value of the function. So if this is your radius, let's talk about this radius now of the disk then that is actually the value of the function, right? 
So the radius of this disk can be associated with the value of the function itself, as you can see here, right? And uh, the width is delta x, which is very small. So in that case, what is the volume of this disk? Well, the volume will be that circular portion, the area of the base, which is pi r square, r, the radius is f of x, pi r square, times this width, delta x. So that becomes the volume of this particular disk. Correct? Now, the idea is, what is the volume of the solid of revolution? That is the question. Well, let us consider this point to be any point A and that to be any point B. Then, in that case, we could have infinite number of disks between A to B as shown here. So, this volume is sum of volumes of infinitesimally small disks shown in the figure. Correct? Where the x value changes from A to B. Correct? So we could write this in general as equal to what? Using the concepts of integration. So that sum of a continuous graph, this is a continuous graph for us, right? So let me write down. Uh, we are talking about continuous function. This is kind of important to understand, right? There is no break in between. Will be integral of all this, which is pi f of x whole square dx, correct? Uh, dx, where the interval is from a to b. So that gives you the formula to find volume of any solid of revolution. You get the idea, right? So, let me write it in a different ink. So, we have this formula. Pi is a constant. So, we can take pi outside. Integral from A to B of the function f of x. It could be any function with respect to dx, right? So, so that delta x, which remains constant for each disk. Perfect. So, we get our general formula here for any solid of revolution. Do you understand the concept, right? So once again, we have these disks whose radius r, whose radius r, this is the radius, is same as f of x, right? So for any function at any point, this will be f of x, right? So the volume of each disk added as the value of x changes from a to b gives us the total volume and that becomes the formula is that clear to you correct now we'll use this formula to derive the expression for volume of a cone okay so let's do it let us find the volume of a cone using the general formula which we have just derived for volume of solids of revolution the formula for us is volume equals to pi integral from a to b f of x whole square dx. Okay. Now, since we need to find volume of a cone, let us first understand how can a cone be formed by revolution of solids, right? So, the idea is to get the solid by a revolution, right? You can actually make a cone by revolving a line segment, right? So let's consider a line segment. 
So the formation of the cone is by a line segment. rotation of 360 degrees about x axis. So if you do that, then let's say this is your line segment. And if you rotate, you do get a cone, right? That's the whole idea. That is the cone for you. Now, normally in a cone, we are talking about two parameters. One is, uh, we say, well, this is a radius, and uh, that's the height. Okay, so these are the two parameters for our cone. Let me also define the function here. So, so the function f of x, in this case, should be equal to any straight line. So, we'll just take it general mx, right? whereas m is a constant, right? So what we're saying here is that the function f of x for us is mx, where m is a constant. Correct. Uh, we are starting with the origin. So we say let a will be zero for us. And in this formula, b is going to be h for us. How do I get r? Well, r is the value of the function at h. So r is basically uh, f of h, right? So which is in this case mh. So replacing x with h, we get radius. Perfect. So these are the parameters which kind of match with our cone. Is that okay? So we have got all our parameters. Now, Let's find the volume. Volume is pi integral from a to b of the function square dx. Now replacing the values, we get from 0, a is 0 for us, b is h for us, right? The function is in general mx whole square dx. Is that clear to you? So in the formula, we made all the substitutions and now let's do the integration so pi is a constant when you integrate m is also a constant let me rewrite this 0 to h what we get here is m square x square dx now m is a constant so we can write it outside integral of x square is x cube over 3 over the interval 0 to h Right, so that gives us pi m square and uh, 1 by 3. Okay, so we can write this h cube, right, minus 0, of course, over 3. So, what we get here is pi 1 by 3 pi. We can write is so, it okay, m square h cube. We can rearrange these to get it familiar to what we have understood so far. MH is R, right? So, so MH will become R. So I could write it like this. Equal to 1 by 3 pi. MH whole square times H. Perfect. So now you see that mh is r so we can write this as 1 by 3 pi mh is r r square h so we get volume of a cone equals to 1 by 3 pi r square h do you see that where for us r is equals to m times h for any line with slope m does it work out? So that is how you can actually find the formula for your cone. And this method can be used to find volume of any solid formed by any given function. One condition which you should always remember is we're talking about continuous functions.
right? So continuous function within the given interval. So I hope that helps. We'll take up more examples in this playlist. I'd like you to go through these examples and the test questions from previous test papers to really get hold of this concept. Thanks for watching and all the best.